being a little bit late, they were a little slow at uh, lunch today, so we uh, just couldn't get out of there quite as quick as we wanted to. But uh, we are now down on uh, docket uh, uh, PC16002 uh, to rebuttal evidence and cross-examination by the applicant. And you have 10 minutes, so uh, if you all would like to re rebut any of the evidence. <clears throat> Uh, again, Drew Zazowski representing the applicant. Um, uh, before I start, I just wanted to get a point of clarification from uh, the commissioners and maybe the maybe the county attorney as far as um, the county's stance and the lack of input from KYTC related to the signal. Um, we're a little unclear how we should be responding to the various email correspondence to date, um, which was you know kind of in flux while our application was being submitted. So. I guess it's really a question back to you guys. Um, how should we be interpreting the information that we're getting from, from KYTC? Urban, do you want um, to address that? I'm not, so, I'm not so sure I have an answer. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it, it is something new. It, it isn't um, anything where we're not of the understanding they're actually going to put a traffic signal there. I think it's been submitted to Frankfurt, so what do we do? Uh, I, I wish I had a better guidance for you. I don't really know. Okay. Okay. Uh, ob obviously, the implication is that if a signal's put there, it does change your uh, entrances. Sure. Mr. Carter, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Uh... Until, until there's a confirmation from uh, the Department of Transportation that they're going to put something there, I don't think the, the board can consider its impact on the applicant's application. Okay, thank you for, for clarifying. Um, you know, I've been to uh, enough of these to know that emotions can run pretty high at these meetings and I understand that. And I'm glad that the, the neighbors are coming out and I think that we, we hear them pretty loud and clear um, as far as our application is concerned. What I'd, like to, what I'd like to do is to ask the board or maybe we can work on this uh, collaboratively on what conditions we can apply to our approval um, that will satisfy uh, the residents and that will satisfy uh, the commissioners. So um, as far as my rebuttal goes, rather than um, coming up with counterpoints to the folks who got up here and, and testified, I'd rather spend our time working on some conditions um, that I think that we can work on our site plan to better mitigate the concerns of, of the residents. So um, at that point, I'm not sure how you want to handle it or if, if we kick it back to the residents for some input there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I, I just want to clarify procedure because you haven't been in front of us. The rebuttal evidence, and then you'll have another, one last opportunity, exactly. and that's yep. closing statements. Correct. So uh, just so you know, this isn't your last time at the podium. Right. And I think, you know, as chairman, I would, would just say that, uh, you know, we're through, we're, you know, we're, we've gone through the hearing so far. And, you know, I think we just, you know, conclude the hearing, see what the commissioners think when we get down to motions and, and those kind of things, and then see what, you know, what direction they want to go. I think, you know, trying to do this and, and put something together on the fly is going to be fairly difficult. And, and so, you know, I think... As chairman, I think I would suggest that we go through, finish the hearing, and then when we get down to then our motion, where we bring motions forward, you know, and and, uh, and then we can see if there's binding elements that want, you know, that uh, are suggested, you know, and then we kind of handle it that way. But I think we're far enough in the process and through the hearing that we need to conclude the hearing and then, uh, you know, kind of see where we go as far as the commission and what the commission thinks. Okay. What do you mean by uh, just, just as an example of, of a condition that, that we were talking about over lunch was, um, you know, uh, the, the county um, traffic consultant did bring up that we don't have the appropriate radius for the truck turning right out of our northern driveway on 146. You know, a condition that we would have um, no problem meeting would be to move our entire retail unit back 15, 20 feet, whatever we needed to achieve that 25 foot radius at that driveway. Um, that's just an example of some of the compromises I think that we can we can make to um, help alleviate the concerns of, of the residents. So at that point, that's that's really all I have for rebuttal. But I just wanted to let you know that we, you know, we are willing to work on this site plan, um, and I think there's some things we can do that will uh, really help our application. Okay. Thank does you. that complete your rebuttal then? It does. Okay. All right. I would now ask on the rebuttal evidence and cross examination by the opposition. 
Are there folks here that would like to get up and, and uh, <clears throat> say something as far as uh, rebuttal? Uh, lady back here, and then we'll get you here on the second row. And again, just name for the record. Alicia Strunk. Um, I, I may not speak for every resident in Darby Point. I'm, I'm going to say that I'm speaking for a majority of them. No truck service, period, is no amount of change you make to your plans is going to make us satisfied. Again, anytime you have a semi-truck taking a right or a left turn out of that wide, whether it's going into 146 and oncoming traffic or not, is going to cause a safety issue for my children and their lives. Every day, my son takes a left turn. Excuse me. This is a very emotional situation because I'm talking about my kid's safety. Every day, my son, my 17-year-old son, takes a left turn with his 14-year-old brother out to go to Oldham County High School. If you have a 18-wheeler taking a right turn, there is an accident waiting to happen. If you have an 18-wheeler coming in to take a left turn, he cannot see to get out. You've got us blocked in. You've got us in a situation where we've got tons of traffic coming in and out. We're not talking about just getting ConAgra business. We've, we've dealt with that, and we're dealing with that. You're talking about increased um, traffic from the interstate coming in. We have neighbors that didn't make it because of accidents on 71. If you've ever been through 146, when there's an accident on 71, you cannot drive through there. There is no way, if one of us had an emergency, that we could even get out. That, that's my rebuttal to you and what you're saying. I do not oppose Thornton's expanding. We are neighbors to you. We give you a lot of business, and we'll continue to do so. I would just ask that you really reconsider this semi-truck service. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Spinell? Excuse me. Your name is Mr. Uh, Carl Kroboth. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, and just in the form of a – am I allowed to ask a question? It's rebuttal. It's rebuttal and okay. cross-examination. Okay. So. So I just want to ask from Thornton's, has this concept been tried anywhere else? Yes. We need to get you back up to get it on the record, please. Yeah. And where is that, and what are the, what are the crossroad conditions at the place where it's been uh, tried? Sure. Yes, uh, it has been tried. Um, we have a similar facility in uh, Louisville, actually, at National Turnpike. Same number of pumps, um, generally the same uh, conditions as far as zoning in the surrounding area, industrial park with some uh, residential close by. Um, are the that two streets that uh, corner the facility, are they, do they have residential access off of any of them? No. Okay. Thank you. They do not. Thank you. Um, and then I think that's been cleared up that the light is not part of this proposal. I think that's clear. Okay. So from the standpoint of where we sit, from a safety concern, from the emotional concerns, from the empirical evidence that's been put forward, I feel that there's enough for you all to deny this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else uh, for rebuttal or cross-examination? Seeing no one else getting up, uh, down now to final statement of the opposition. Uh, folks that are here that are opposed to the application, is there anyone that wants to get up and speak uh, uh, for a final statement? Um, Carl Kraboth again, um, and I'm going to add to the, from the standpoint of a father, and what my role is as a father, when it comes down to it, is to protect my children. And I think when it comes down to the role of county government, when it comes down to the role of any government, is to protect their citizens. So I play a role in county government, because I have to step up and protect my daughter. And I have to step up to speak to you in a capacity that I really don't like doing. Because I need to protect my daughter. From the standpoint of the empirical evidence, I think the traffic study shows the ingress. I think it shows that the KSR standard, if you approve this based on the KSR, uh, that you're approving what could be illegal turns. And I think just from a general safety standpoint of the citizens that have spoken, we know the situation is bad already. Why are we even looking to add to it? Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else that would like to get up for a final statement? Yes, Kurt Walter. Um, I didn't come up and rebut before because everything has been said that needs to be said. The access on 146 on and off, I mean, getting back onto it, everybody said it's a safety issue. I'm just here to reinforce that. And again, we are good customers of Thornton's. We like Thornton's. We like what they do. I do not like this idea, and I feel I can speak for just about everybody in Cedar Point and Grand Villa Estates. We don't like this. Thing. It's not a good idea. I would just assume that the commission voted down. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for a final statement? Final statement of the opposition. Mr. Tice, or what matters to Tice? <clears throat> Let me say one more time, I think there's plenty of justification to turn this down. Not emotional, I don't live right there. I live in the area, I'm well familiar with the traffic. We're going from four pumps to eight pumps. So they must know that the generation of traffic or their, their potential there is tremendous. Uh, the community is willing to understand that and say, okay, that's all right. But what we're not comfortable with is the other part where I phrased earlier, putting a nine foot in a seven shoe. Um, I think we've heard enough evidence to decline it. We've got enough new things that have been brought up, such as uh, stuff that the state's doing. The site plan is, uh, is totally changeable with things that could change in the next six months. So uh, I think what we need to do is turn it down, uh, then come back with a site plan that uh, expands their uh, vehicular service, and uh, hopefully that's acceptable to our community and safe for our community. Thank you. Anyone else for a final statement? Yes, sir. Were you sworn in earlier, sir? No, I didn't. Okay. Not. Let's uh, get you sworn in. Ms. Fox? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Dave Linian, and my address is 1720 Grand Villa Drive. Tell your last name, please. L-I-N-N-E-A-N. -N -N. Okay. Thank you. And I just wanted to briefly say, kind of as, as Wayne said, and he said, uh, with the emotion, I know there's a lot of emotion. I was involved with the Conagra, and it was the same thing. We heard a lot of things, and I understand it's their property, and they have the right to do what they want with their property within reason. But I think it gets down to essentially the issue with traffic on 146 and even the, the KRS issue. Even though the police, uh, chief of police said, well, depends on leniency. The thing is, is that law exists for a reason. It exists to keep the traffic flowing. If there's an accident, and I can see in this, with a truck turning left, you're gonna back up 70 feet into that left turn lane. Another truck's gonna to wanna to come out of that driveway of the right because that's the only way that they're gonna be allowed to go in and out of that uh, property. It very well could cause an accident, could cause a backup, which could lead to another accident on 146. And even the traffic studies, they may say one thing, but we all know from dealing with Conagra and what it brought to the area that there's a little bit more than just what the study says. So with that, as Wayne said, I think you guys have enough uh, evidence, and even Will Douglas brought it up earlier in terms of that KRS issue, that there is just no way that they can avoid turning into that lane, crossing that uh, lane, and uh, uh, do it within the legal confines of the law. Whether the police choose to enforce that or not, I think we need to look at it and say, what does the law say? And it says you shouldn't cross that line. So with that, I think you guys have enough to uh, vote that motion down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, anyone else? Got about a minute, a little over a minute left here for a final statement of the opposition. All right, uh, seeing none, we'll now move into final statement of the applicant. We have five minutes, sir. Good. Oh, sorry. I'll get her. Thanks. There we go. Uh, Drews is obviously again representing the applicant. Um, I, I don't want to comment on on any of the parental concerns. I think that I think that those are justifiable. Um, I, I, I have no argument to um, to to those arguments by the by the residents. Um, as far as our application goes, however, the only empirical data that does not support an approval of our project is the right turn lane. Um, or the right turn movement out of the northern driveway having to use the, um, the two-way left turn lane. That's the only piece of empirical data that I've heard through the entire testimony 
um, that says or points to a, a denial of the project. And uh, as part of our rebuttal, we said we would be willing to uh, move our site back. We would create the 25-foot radius. We could show that that turn would not require the two-way left turn lane. I think there are a number of other uh, items that we could propose at this project. We could work with KYTC and the county on a signal. Um, I think we could, which would mitigate the left turns uh, that, I, that I believe Felicia is, is concerned about. Um, but at the end of the day, if we do these things and the answer is still no, because no, then that's, that's not reasonable. You have, to, you have to follow the empirical data that's presented in front of you. You have to look at the zoning ordinance, which it's an, it's an appropriate use. You have to look at the traffic study and the level of services, which are maintained. Um, like I said, the only piece that you can point to is the two-way left turn lane, which we believe we can mitigate with a condition. So at the end of the day, while there's, it, is, it is emotional and it is, a, it is a public hearing and the public have a say, um, you have to look at the facts of our case I think there's plenty that we can do if we were to, if we wanted to table um, our application until such time we could work with KYTC on the signal, um, which I think solves a lot of the problems the residents have brought up today. But at the end of the day, if we do all that, and the answer is no because we don't like diesel, well, that's that's not a fair argument. And I would really hope that you that you look at the facts when you're making your decision. Thank you. All right, is with that, uh, the docket uh, PZ16002 has been completed. And now I would ask uh, Mr. Urban and Mr. Carter if you would outline uh, what's being requested here on uh, this docket. And then, uh, we'll, then I'll ask the commission for a motion one way or the other, and uh, we'll get a second, and then we will discuss it. So, uh, Mr. Urban, would you well, want to start? Well, it's a, again, it's a uh, development plan review, and in your staff report, you have, uh, as always, motion, uh, sample motion to either approve or deny. Uh, you have some proposed binding elements if you were ch to choose um, approving the development plan. And uh, I, I think, actually, I don't have a whole lot more to say other than it's up to how the commission decides to move forward. I mean, there are potentially some binding elements that are in addition to the ones in the staff report. And uh, I it seems to me it'd be smarter to get a motion and a second on the floor and then mm -hmm. discuss. Okay. Mr. Carter? I agree with that. Okay. All right, as chair, I would ask now that uh, on docket PZ16002, uh, we are now open for a motion one way or the other. And uh, once we get a motion and get it duly seconded, then we will open it up for discussion. Mr. King? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this time, I will move for denial of the application. Um, this is uh, specifically based on concerns with traffic. Um, the traffic uh, uh, and specifically mitigation of traffic concerns by use of off-site um, uh, facilities of the, the roadway and the, the, uh, the left turn lane is not within um, uh, uh, the, the what I, I can't get comfortable with, with, with the use of the off-site um, uh, uh, facilities to make traffic on this site work. Um, we have heard a number of um, uh, references to things that might be in the works that would make it a better uh, application and some potential changes that could contribute to that objective. Um, I'd like to get a, um, um, a look at that plan, but it's not what's before us today. Uh, and everybody has a chance to come and um, uh, take a bite at the apple here, and uh, I don't think we're going to have that with tweaks downstream. So uh, I uh, uh, conclude my motion with, with that. Mr. Carter, is it an adequate motion? I think it is, but I think it needs to be more specific. <clears throat> right. Maybe I could suggest something. Okay. There are not adequate roads and traffic control devices at this time to ensure the safe flow of additional semi-truck traffic in the area that would be generated at, by the development? Uh, though I did not specifically state that, that certainly is among the things I believe I would like to incorporate those comments into the motion. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Carter? Is that, no, with that that's incorporation, that would be adequate motion then? Thank you, Mr. Carter. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor to deny docket PZ16002. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. 
I have a couple, okay, uh, Mr. Horton seconds. Now the uh, floor is open for discussion on the motion to deny. Yes, sir, Mr. Horton. Was it, did you nod toward me? I did. Mr. Okay, Horton, I'm thank sorry. you. Yes, sorry. Um, I looked at this long and hard. I buy gas. I buy gas there too. I'm there all the time. Um, true, we look at the facts regarding this application, but we do have some degree of, of discretion. Um, I started writing things that I was concerned about, and I wrote so many, I uh, tore half of them up. I'm going to run through some of them very quickly as to why I believe. Um, this should be denied. First of all, we're adding 12 more, mo more new pumps. Um, uh, it's only six miles up to the next truck stop. Um, I'm concerned about multiple truck backups on Highway 146 blocking the I-75 um, uh, exit and... I-71. I-71. I mean, 71, excuse me, thank you. And the uh, traffic, well, no, I, on, on, I, on 146, I was concerned about a 146 blocking uh, high blocking 146 if they back up on the exits and entrance ramps blocking 146 sure. okay. and then I and then the reverse of that which is I'd be concerned if that were to happen blocking I-71 exit ramps and so forth trying to queue up to get to the stations um, when accidents happens this is going to be compounded if and when that happened um, of course, there's a major impact on the Fox Run Road. There are only two schools here within a half to three quarters of a mile, and both of them are going to be somewhere involved in that AM and peak M hours, which we know now is already dysfunctional. Um, in the comp plan, there's a, a place called T-1-6. It doesn't specifically apply to this, but they talk about utilizing traffic analysis to project or describe or suggest ways of offsetting traffic problems and I don't see any in this plan. Um, Highway 146 is an arterial low priority. We don't know if it's ever gonna be worked on by the state, so we can't rely on that. Uh, I think the speed limit through there, if I'm not mistaken, is 45 miles an hour. Nobody's mentioned that. If, I, if I'm correct on that, that is pretty fast. Um, we already have semis coming down through the distribution facility next to it there, and we have a multiple year construction coming up on I-71. And finally, we know it is functioning at a dysfunctional level, although acceptable at D, and it will go to E and F with or without that, and that certainly isn't a good projection. And, uh, and we already had one, one semi and train wreck on, on the, the railroad across the, across the road that parallels this this morning. So those are just some of my comments that I think support the fact that this needs to be denied. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Further discussion on the motion to deny? <clears throat> Further discussion. All right, we ready to vote? Um, this is on docket PZ16002. Uh, application has been filed by Thorntons for approval of a development plan on approximately 3.34 acres. And the property is located at 4731 West Highway 146 Buckner. And the zoning is C4 Highway Service District and I-2 Heavy Industrial District. And I would call on uh, Ms. Fox now to take the vote. And this is a motion to deny this docket. Ms. Fox? Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Kleinfuss? Yes. Mr. Mesker? Yes. Mr. McWilliams? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Arvin? Yes. Ms. Bonet? Yes. Ms. Crosby? Yes. Mr. Douglas? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. All right, on docket PZ16002, uh, the motion to deny has been approved on a vote of 11 to 0. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, 11 to 0. So with that, we'll take about a 10-minute recess to reset for our next docket. Thank you all. <laughs>